Hello my friends, a very warm welcome to the tutorial The Winds of Change where autumn here is in full swing. Um, if you're interested in how this project was made, let's first of all look at the materials. To begin with we have the watercolour card and this is the hot pressed version. We're also using Inkspress in teal and periwinkle, followed by the same acrylic spray in sun yellow, bright orange and cranberry red. We've also got the mop brush, this is number two, the medium size. We've got a few ink pads, uh, first of all Violet Chalk, Emperor Red and Sundance. Also picked out uh, Blueprint Sketch in Distress Oxide and Fantasia in Versafine Claire. We've got a couple of pan pastels in Titanium White and Orange but these are optional. You can of course use the pastel tins if you have it. And I've pulled out what I'd describe as a few foxy colours to colour the fox. We've got rust and orange and amber, browns, black, cream and a dark blue. Also got the circle template but the circle stencil would do as well. We've got our stencil brushes, a water brush and also Posca pens in red, yellow and I think you also use a dark red like a burgundy colour. In terms of uh, clean colour zig, uh, we've got a red, a couple of greens and a yellow. We've got gel pens in white, yellow and black. Also got our stickles, any colour would do, this is diamond. So uh, next we have the stamps and we've got the lovely bandit, one of my favourites. And also the oak leaves, winter berries, tree scene, small trees and small dwellings. So if you want to convert all of those into something that looks a little like this, just keep on watching. So we've got 5 by 8 inches uh, watercolour card. We've got our paper for dabbing off and also a pencil. And what I'm doing is, first of all, I'm going to draw a hill uh, on the um, top third of the card, just like that. Going to take our ink sprays, we've got periwinkle first of all, and also teal. I'm going to spray those out on our mat. Now the brush is already dampened, and I'm just going to literally sweep the colour across the first uh, third of the page up to the hill. And now for a little teal, and I think that was a little bit too strong for me, so I took my brush and watered it and just dabbed some off and blended it back in again. Added some more periwinkle to the top to darken it, it's a lovely colour, and I think I then dry it off and added another layer, and there it is. Now next we are adding some beautiful colour to the bottom two-thirds of the card. Uh, so we're starting off with our yellow, some orange and also some red. And I've just taken my card out of the way when I spread that because uh, it uh, goes all over the place. <laughs> so um, we're wipe swiping the yellow and look at that glorious colour. This is a, re a real um, primary colour type project. Uh, we're now dabbing the, the orange just across. Rather than sweeping, we're now dabbing for some texture. And the same with the red, just down to the bottom. And then blending it, it all in with uh, a freshly watered brush. And again, taking the red and just stippling it really to add a little bit of texture on the hill. And carrying that on, on up a bit as well. Just literally dabbing the, the top of the brush in. Going to dry it off and there we are. That's our first main layer. Now we're going to take blue uh, print sketch in the oxide. And I want to add a little more depth to the sky. I'm thinking about the moon. And to make the moon glow, we need some contrast. And I'm thinking about where it's going to be placed. And I'm really just darkening up the sky around uh, where the moon is going to uh, go and that will create a bit of a glow. So that's it done. Next up the gorgeous Emperor Red and this is really a fabulous colour. Look at the depth there. Oh it's so luscious. <laughs> so I'm 
putting that mainly um, around the edges and the bottom half of the uh, card just building up the uh, colour and deepening it slightly that's us next up I've got violet chalk and uh, I'm going to stipple this in and uh, not um, blending it as such but just dabbing the top of the uh, pa the stencil brush into the surface so that it's more textured so it's adding depth to the bottom of the picture and also some texture and that's it now I thought we would blend in some yellow because it's rather bright at the top so taking the Sundance and another stencil brush and just trying to blend that in between the orange and the top of the hill and that's that now for some stamping uh, now this is the uh, permanent ink pad and the little set the small dwelling set this is copy paper that's roughly been um, torn in a, a circular shape uh, to protect and mask the hill and we're just going to take the little stamps and stamp them around the top of the hill this is the tall uh, single tower or house and I'm going to pop one of these either side of the centre dwelling there we are and finally the little one and again I'm going to pop that either side at the top of the hill and don't worry about um, the colour of these and um, really you could stamp them in any colour that you have because we are going to colour them in but before I do that I'm just adding a line of green there to ground them at the top now we're going to add some trees and you'll know from my projects that this tiny tree is a firm favourite <laughs> I'm always adding it and we're taking the uh, element sink pad first of all uh, and we're stamping two or three of the trees and now I'm taking the mop brush which is still damp from before there isn't a lot of water on this it's just damp and I'm blending uh, this ink in with the background now this reacts with water so it's a lovely um, technique to use if you want to add a hazy first layer of trees and I'm taking the second little stamp from the set and I'm just plopping those down and I'm blending them out in the same fashion and as I say keep your your brush relatively dry just a little bit damp and there you are don't worry about the houses we're going to restore them shortly now I'm taking the permanent ink which is not uh, reactive with water just to add some definition on top I'm not uh, stamping them directly on top of the ones before but to to each side just to uh, bring some of the little trees to the foreground and adding a little texture to the top and finally we've got this lovely elm tree from the little set of small trees and this is to add some height and some extra dimension and texture to our little scene and a couple more to go either side and that is the trees complete next up is Foxy uh, love this stamp got some real character in, in his movement it's a beautifully beautifully drawn stamp and we're just going to use the same ink pad to stamp him in place but we will be colouring him in later so don't worry if it doesn't come out perfectly there we are now I've got my um, circle template and again you can use the circle stencil if you have that I just have this in my drawer and it's easy to lift and this is a white gel pen and I'm just filling in the circle basically and that will be our moon I'm drying that off Next I'm still using the white pen and I've decided to colour the little houses in white and restore the shape which perhaps has been lost when we were stamping our trees. So I'm really just following the detail of the stamp and I'm also then going to colour the roof in in a Posca pen and this is like a dark red burgundy colour. And finally putting a little chimney in in white 
Now this is the black fine liner and I'm colouring in the doors and the windows just in black and there they all are complete. Next I thought at this stage I would just add a hint of a shadow just coming across the top of the hill. Nothing fancy, just a little a little shadow um, in the direct you know the direction that the moon would be lighting on top of them. Also just uh, blending that out with the water brush which is optional. It's just me fussing. Ignore <laughs> and then darken it down again. So that's it. Now the titanium white pan pastel and it's simply a dab with your finger and blend it in around the edge and we have like magic created a glow. So next uh, we're taking our lovely pastel pencils and these are the foxy colours. Uh, so we've got an orange, a rust, an amber, a cream. I've also got a couple of colours in brown, a white, a black and a dark purpley blue. So we're going to uh, do a first layer using the, the mid-tone brown. And it's really just to uh, set a base. Make sure that your ink underneath is dry. I'm not terribly sure that mine was and uh, if, if it's not completely dry there is a bit of a resist so do dry it off thoroughly before you add the layer of pastel. As you can see I've added then a dark um, layer in black around the feet and I'm starting to introduce some uh, colour to the top half um, and also this little patch of, of white fur under the chin and some light areas on the face to define that a little bit. Sorry about my blurry camera. Just adding some light uh, at the top of the fox and also on his little tail. And just gradually building it up, um, making sure that the bits of stamp that were perhaps missed uh, in the first stamping, just to put them in place again, following the line art of course with the beautiful stamp. Just adding some shadow underneath the tail, underneath the belly, underneath the chin and defining some areas there along the ears and I uh, thought I would add at this stage some delicate little highlights uh, which isn't always easy with a broad nibbed pen so I dab off with my finger just to blend in. I don't want it too stark, I just want a hint of white here and there and where I don't uh, like what I've done and want to alter, as well as dabbing it with my finger, I can always go over it again with the pastels to dull it down. So it is a bit of a dance, um, toing and froing, um, placing down what you think will look good, dabbing it off and fixing it as you go along. So there we are, and I think I add some on the paws as well. And that's basically the wee fox. Now I thought at this stage that he was too brown so I, I took a pan pastel in orange because I wanted to add a lighter tone to the top. Uh, fear not, all is not lost. I also then go back over and restore the bottom half with brown and black and then add some rust colour on top and I think I was happier with that. Now for the shadow uh, this colour is a lovely colour. It's like a dark purple stroke navy. I think it's probably more purple than navy. It's more of a periwinkle colour and I thought that would go nice against the red to create a shadow. And I roughly follow the direction of the paws and then do a big blob for the body. <laughs> then take the black pastel and add that close into the paws just to give that a bit more uh, depth. And there we are, he's grounded on the hill. Now to give him something to play with and we're back to Fantasia and the beautiful single leaf and I'm placing this close to his nose to indicate that he is playing with the leaves that are blowing ahead of him and the idea is to have these leaves flowing across the picture and up off the picture so that your eye follows the fox and then the leaves so that's the uh, the windy trail of leaves 
in place and now I thought I would add for extra texture a few more leaves along the sides which we will uh, give more definition to in a little while. to add a little bit of energy to the piece um, by simply adding a few little dots but more particularly I'm interested in a trail of wind that goes from the fox and through the leaves so it's creating a, a little path using the yellow dots uh, from one leaf to the next right across and up over the sky up until the end so you're drawing your eye up uh, the page It's now been mounted up into black card and um, that's a sort of pale lilac piece of card I had hanging around. I've also added some white and black dots uh, to the trail of wind. That's it. So I hope you enjoyed today's project and I really look forward to seeing your own versions of this autumn picture. So take very good care of yourselves until next time and above all, get creating. Be brave and enjoy the adventure. Mm -hmm.